Will the advent of Wi-Fi 6 kill the world of hackers and makers, or will we just rotate to new exploits and attack vectors? Technically, two questions. Mm -hmm. So being able to use more robust encryption, like the um, like Dragonfly uh, handshake, is definitely a plus. It means that some of the attacks that have worked for a really long time against a WPA2 are not going to work anymore. So yeah, as hackers, we're going to have to start moving on to other exploits and other methods of doing things that allow these same old tricks to work. So rather than fully moving over to you know attacking like a superior uh, type of encryption, we can just disable it mm. or it, jam it in creative ways or make it so that it's more difficult to use so that the router or device that has to support older devices in this transition period that will last quite some time will be forced to downgrade, downgrade the encryption to something that we can attack. So frequently, and this is something that Matthew Van Hoff pointed out to me when I asked him basically the same question while interviewing him. Uh, basically, like you know, we don't need to abandon these attacks we've been using for such a long time. We can just downgrade encryption because most of these devices are designed to be compatible with older devices and will fully support older versions of encryption for quite some time. This is a, a downgrade attack we see over and over again for lots of different things. Um, but if a, a system supports, you know, uh, the le maybe like its least secure type of encryption, and you can force it to start using that, that's often the first place that hackers start when trying to attack anything that has good security. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just kind of the way this is going to evolve. Like we're going to see more people learning how to like downgrade WPA3 to WPA2 so we can just attack it the same old way. But there are some attacks against WPA3 that are notable that Matthew Van Hoff has come up with. So you know, it's not totally going to be uh, like untouchable. There's already ways of taking a swing at it, but it's not as um, badly compromised as WPA2 when it comes to you know being able to brute force people's passwords or do some of the kind of stuff that's actually really easy to do. Um, WPA3 is also designed to protect weak passwords a lot better. So even if your password sucks, it should still offer robust protection, whereas WPA2 is completely dependent on the strength of your password. What are some of these new attacks besides like the dragon blood attack that you were mentioning? Um, well, that was that's kind of the main one. I know um, we talked about like fragmentation before. So what you can do um, with the new standard includes things like being able to um, overwhelm the router and shut mm -hmm. it down basically by sending it too many handshakes that require too much processing um, and basically fill up what the resources the router has. So you can effectively jam WPA3 in some cases by overwhelming um, the security mechanism that they actually put into place to fix a different problem mm -hmm. that Matthew Van Hoff found. So um, by increasing the processing overhead for each handshake, you make it possible for the attacker to overwhelm the device with just a ton of fake handshakes and make it so that it basically shuts down, which gives you the ability to jam the network. So it's kind of attacks kind like of that. A, um, traditional like DOS attack sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's much more of a traditional DOS attack because we're not able to forage packets the way that we are with the WPA2, which doesn't you know validate uh, management frames. Like there's no way of telling who they actually came from. This does, so that's a really major difference. But we can still act as a new device that's trying to join the network and just send a bunch of handshakes, which the router will have no choice but to process. Hmm. <clears throat> and because they are using more robust encryption, it means. <clears throat> that the processing takes a lot more overhead. And a smaller device like a router probably won't have the, the resources to put up with very many of them. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, so yeah, if you have any other questions about Wi-Fi, that's kind of my specialty. So I really enjoy answering those in particular. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We're going to pick a question from this session to be our lucky winner, and we will announce this on our Friday stream. And if you are the question that we select, then you will win a $100 Hack5 gift card. So uh, join us on Friday to find out who's the winner. Of course, if you are the winner and you can't make it, we will still reply to your comment and let you know that you won. But yeah, thank you to everyone who submitted a question. If your question didn't get picked this week, or if you have a new question you'd like to submit, make sure to drop them on my Twitter or on the YouTube channel, preferably the YouTube channel, so we can find it easily, and we'll make sure it gets answered next week, and you'll automatically be entered to win a $100 Hack5 gift card. So, all right, everyone, we will see you later in the week. Thank you very much for your questions. Bye.